Yes, it's Erin. Happily we go, and it is PB and Journal Tuesday. So last episode, we created this page with our flip out, and this week we have another flip out. But I don't really want to incorporate it into the other pages, so I want to see how I could extend this page and create its very own. So I found these two old book pages on my desk, and I cut them into pieces. So you can see each little sentence is a piece here. And I'm going to use these to almost uh, basket weave the page extension. So what we're going to do is you can measure it straight out so it fits the page, but I kind of want the words to be all wonky. So I'm just going to glue them down and we can cut it afterwards. So let's jump into it. So I'm going to grab my trusty Uhu glue stick and glue these sentences onto the page. Now I'm leaving a little bit of space in between each one and having some trouble here. Oh boy, this page is just gonna be tons of fun. I'm not sure where I'm taking it. I just know that we're gonna do this basket weave and then we'll just see where the page takes us. So now that we are almost at the end here, thank goodness for technology so you didn't have to watch all of that. Let's glue it on there. We're gonna flip our book sideways and go ahead and weave those extra pages in. Now the page that I cut from is not long enough to go over the whole page. But I'm okay with that. If you want to extend your little strips and then make them go all the way down, you can. I thought maybe it might be kind of fun to have a little bit of space um, in between on the ends, as you'll see here, uh, to you know be able to see through the page. But we'll just see where it takes us. gluing the very beginning and the ending of each strip so that way it'll kind of keep it in place as we go. Now I'm leaving a little space as you can see I'm measuring it out here to make sure that it'll line up with the previous one and then just going to basket weave it the opposite direction. Now our page is done. So we have all the extra little bits here and we're going to cut those off and we want to make sure that our page is going to be able to fold close like our whole book and that's a little bit long so I'm going to cut a smidge more off. There you go and then as you can see we have a couple of holes on the bottom of the page and on the top. Um, I'm thinking you could leave it but I'm thinking it, I might reinforce it a little bit so I'm going to take some of those extra strips and just strategically cover those up. There's always that one little straggler there, isn't it? So just grab your glue stick and just glue that baby back down. So now I'm gonna take some deli paper and put it underneath my page and use some clear gesso to uh, bind our little basket woven pieces together and then also to help um, thicken and strengthen our page. So we'll go ahead and do this on this side and then flip it over and do the same thing on the back side. drawing it I was thinking I wasn't sure what I wanted to do on the back side later on so to reinforce the page I'm gonna take some matte medium and then take that same piece of deli paper that I just used and I'm gonna glue it onto the back side of our page this will help keep uh, all of those pieces together and then whatever we decide to do next week on our page it's not gonna seep through our basket weave and ruin today's page so once that's done I'm gonna dry it and then go ahead and cut around that deli paper to match our page Now that that's 
task done. I'm feeling slightly accomplished, but I'm thinking, geez, that's about all I had planned, so I'm not sure what else to do. But I'm thinking I should incorporate some of that texture from the basket weaving onto the rest of the page to kind of give it that cohesive feel. So I'm just gonna grab my glue stick, go ahead and glue some extra pieces on, and then cover those with matte medium to help them stay down. Once that's good and dry, we're going to grab some uh, regular gesso, and this can be any gesso. This is just some cheapy um, gesso, deco art that I got from Michaels, um, and I like it. It's just really smooth. It doesn't have much texture to it at all, but I'm going to use my brayer, and I'm going to brayer that across the page. I don't want to cover all of it, but I just want to bring the paper um, to a neutral tone to work with. And now I have the beautiful Nickel Azo from Golden, and I'm just going to add that onto my page so we can kind of start getting this baby a little bit grunged out. I'm going to use my finger and smooth some of it out, um, but then leave some of it patchy as well. And now we're just going to work on building up our layers. The important thing with the paperback journal is each layer you create, make sure you dry it really good because those papers are thin and despite using the mediums, uh, the gesso and the matte medium, they still can get a little soggy. So as you can see, I took some of that Charvin, that gorgeous tealish tropical green color, and I'm using an old toothbrush. I love the texture that an old toothbrush gives. Those bristles, you know, some, some of them are touching them, some of them are wonky out, but it just gives it a great kind of blended feel. And now I have some Prussian blue, and this was one of those like, oh, I don't know, let's maybe we can bring some blue to the page. And I'm going to spray that with water. It's going to go crazy everywhere, and I'm just going to sop some of it up, but it's going to give us uh, some extra kind of bluish grunged look. As I'm drying, I'm thinking, what do I want to incorporate next? So then I thought, oh, I'm going to bring out the Lindy's. I saw my friend Michelle create with these last week in one of her journal pages, and it reminded me how much I love them. So I went ahead and grabbed those uh, to incorporate them into the page. Now, um, if you don't have Lindy's, you could use the uh, color bursts or you could use brusho, or you could come up with something different. It's whatever you want to do, but I just love the look, and you can see the little granules and all the different colors um, that the Magicals bring. Plus, they have a hint of shimmer, and you'll know how I love my shimmer. Now here's another oldie but goodie that I haven't used in forever, and that's the gelatos. I love the gelatos, they're so creamy, it's almost like arting with lipstick. Um, so I'm just gonna take this brownish color and then almost a reddish color, and I'm going to blend them across the page. Now you can use a dry finger, or as you can see here shortly, I'm gonna take the spray bottle and just wet my finger a little bit to help blend it across the page. to bring back a little bit more of the white color. We had some of that patchy in the middle. So I'm just taking some of the gesso and rubbing it on the page with my finger and then we'll grab that toothbrush again and also use one of my other favorite texture tools and that is my fingernail just to uh, draw some little lines into the gesso and then um, I will also use one of the, I think it's the Prima. Um, it's a paintbrush on one side and then a texture tool on the other and I will use a little bit of that as well because you know your fingernail can only take so much paint scraping before it gets all clogged up. I still wasn't sure where I wanted to take the page, so I thought I would just grab a stencil and add a little bit of interesting texture uh, with some paint. I'm gonna use some Titan Buff here and just smear it through with my finger. I will put down everything that I use in the description box below, so if you're interested in any stencils, paint colors, whatever, that is where you will want to find all of those goodies. I'm just taking a damp paper towel and I'm pulling up some of that color so we can still see 
um, the design work down below. I'm gonna add a couple little extra pieces there and then I'm thinking, hmm, I don't know, maybe I should just totally cover the page with that. So I'm gonna almost whitewash the page with the Titan Buff and this will move around our gelatos and some of the uh, Lindy's, but that's okay because you know we're going for a grungy look. So once that is nice and dry, I'm thinking it's stamp time. I have this absolutely gorgeously huge flower from Unity Stamps, it's a Donna Downey stamp. Um, again, that will be down in the description box below. And I'm just taking some VersaFine Onyx Black ink and I'm going to put that all over the stamp and we're gonna stamp that on the page. Now, you have a lot of texture, so be sure to push the, is the stamp really, really good or you might not get a very good impression. And if you don't, hey, that's okay too because you know this is a mixed media grungy page. But, ta-da, it actually turned out really well. Now, I love the VersaFine Onyx Black ink because once it's dry, it is waterproof. Make sure it is very dry before you hit this next step. But I wanted to add a little bit more of the dots down below and look at that, see I messed it up. And you can smudge it and remove it if you do it instantly. That's the beauty of the VersaFine. I'll restamp that and now we will dry it really good before the next step. So I'm bringing back the gelatos and I'm just going to color on that same uh, little lid there that I have my paint on and use that as a paint palette. Add a little bit of water and we're going to go ahead and paint the center of our flowers with a pretty pink and some purple. Now this gives it an almost uh, watercolored look but I decided I wanted it to be a little bit darker so I'm just going to take the gelato and color directly onto the page and then use some water to move it around. And you can keep adding the layers of the gelato until you get the colored payout that you're looking for. While I'm painting this on, I can see the lines of the basket weaving and I am super digging it. I love this. I'm gonna have to do this on another page one of these days. So then I'm gonna take just uh, some of that watered down Titan Buff and brighten up the outside petals of the flower. that's good and dry I thought I wanted a little bit more variation of the pinks and the white so I'm gonna grab my Stabilo Woodies and again this is almost like a gelato but it's in a crayon kind of like a crayon form it's super smudgy they're absolutely wonderful I love these little chunky babies and I'm just going to whiten up the whites and then add that little highlight of the pink in there and we're gonna keep kind of making our flower pop now I have the Posca pen, and again, we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna add some, well actually, I'm gonna add some dots into the center first, and then I'm gonna go around the outside um, and just draw lines, smudge a little with my finger so it's not super duper bright, and then we'll do the same thing with the pink as well. A nifty trick to bring your focal to the forefront of your page is to grab a black stabilo and trace around it. Then you take a wet paintbrush and you just go around that and watch that baby spread. It is gorgeous. It almost adds a shadow, um, kind of ghosted effect, but it's beautiful and it makes it seem like it pops off the page. Plus it adds that added layer of grunge and makes my grungy heart oh so very happy. It's sentiment time! 
and I challenged myself to only use the words from the sentences that I had cut up. And boy, was that hard. But look what I came up with. I'm so excited. Only one thing was missing. The beautiful sound of the words. Isn't that awesome? I just thought it was great because we kind of covered up uh, the words. You, you can sort of see them in the background, but I pretty much covered them up. But I thought this was wonderful. So I'm just using some matte medium to glue those babies down. And then I'm going to grab some glossy accents, another oldie book goodie that I haven't used in forever, and some ultra fine hologla holographic, hello, that was a mouthful, some glitter. I'm going to put some of that onto the dots that are spreading out from the page and into the center of my flower. All that shimmer. Oh my gosh, I'm like dancing in my seat right now. It's so pretty. But let me tell you, this stuff gets everywhere. It got all over the page, even where I didn't have the glue. And while it's still kind of cool, it wasn't the effect I was going for. So I'm just taking a dry paintbrush and I'm brushing that off. Then I'm going to dry it really well with the heat tool and then take another brush and just kind of scrub that page to get some of that glitter off. And that is gonna pretty much finish up today's page. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today on this fabulous Tuesday. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I hope you're able to get into your creative space and get artsy. Until next time, happy creating.